Last week, I wrote about the plight of parents of college-age children transitioning from one sex to another. The parents are distressed about two things. They assert their children received transitioning drugs after short meetings with low-level counselors at university. Not psychologists or medical doctors, and that the parents' only support is an underground online network of self-supporters. Professionals concentrate solely on the transitioning individual to the exclusion of understandably confused parents. I wrote the health ministries of nine provinces for response to this. Parents have told me of their son or daughter going to college, receiving a couple of short meetings with a nurse. A social worker in training or similar individual who is not a psychologist, psychiatrist, medical doctor or licensed therapist. After those quick sessions, perhaps only three. The young adult is given drugs to assist a physical change. Is that sufficient in the province's opinion or law? Does the law allow such individuals to prescribe and administer powerful drugs? Do colleges and universities have the right to allow such activity? Additionally, the parents I have spoken to are all anonymous as they fear for their family security and well-being. They claim when they do go to a professional for assistance in their understandable confusion and grief. They are told only to get with the program. They cannot find any source of comfort and education other than one another. Is it the policy of the government to disregard parents and their concerns? Are there places the parents can go where they will receive understanding? Only Alberta responded. Quebec will not accept media inquiries in English. Scott Johnston, press secretary, health, wrote, in Alberta, the gender surgery program provides funding for eligible Albertans diagnosed with gender dysphoria to receive gender-affirming surgery. The program is for Albertans 18 years and over who, in consultation with their healthcare providers, consider gender surgery an essential component of their transition. An Alberta licensed and registered psychiatrist or physician with extensive training or clinical experience in assessing and managing the mental health needs of the transgender population must provide a diagnosis of gender dysphoria and indicate readiness for the patient to be referred for genital surgery. Patients can't self-refer to the program. He did not respond to the parents' need for assistance and I wasn't asking about surgery. I sent the same letter to the federal health minister and received a response from engineer. After outlining trans rights she wrote, recently, there has been an uptake in campaigns in Canada that use misinformation and disinformation to fuel stigma and hate against trans people. These campaigns often focus on pubertal suppression, hormone therapies, and gender-affirming surgeries. They are designed to foster doubt relating to a minor's ability to know their gender. Consent to care and raise mistrust about established clinical practices. That is the type of response the parents complained about, a scold from the government, ignoring the relevant questions. As opposed to a caring and helpful response. She added, community-based supports for parents of trans people are available through Flag Canada. One parent told me Flag was somewhat helpful. In both Alberta and the Fed's case, they did not respond to the needs of the parents. Eight provinces blew it off, as they do the parents. Families matter, but not to our government it seems.